going to move over here to chronotropy now. And I'm trying to get everything on one page, and I realize that I'm writing really small for the camera. I'll annotate it, so hopefully that will work. But I want to get everything on one page. That's my motto. Chronotropic drugs alter ion channels. to either let more ions flow, more or less ions flow. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with ion channels, there's going to be another video that's on cardiac action potentials, and I'll link to that video. That link should be popping up right about now, and there it is. When we're talking about action potentials, just really briefly, there's a certain set of cells. This is my heart. Kind of. There's a set of cells up here that are called the pacemaker. They're high up in the right atrium. And if you don't understand action potentials, again, watch that other video. But what I'm going to draw here is an action potential. And this is the action potential when an action potential is voltage changing over time. This is how voltage change over time in those particular cells. And there's three ion channels that are important here. This is a, a sodium leak channel. What's this right there? Sodium. This is calcium. And this is potassium. The gist of what I'm going to say is if you can inhibit any of these, then it's going to cause the flow to be lesser. And if each of these peaks is a heart rate, is a heartbeat, then by slowing these rates, then you're going to slow down heart rate. You can also give drugs. Here I'd say if I'm increasing the sodium rates, here I'd be increasing the calcium rate. I'm making a steeper line. Or here if I'm increasing the potassium, now you can see that I'm going to go through the cycle much faster, and that would increase heart rate. And pink again is going to mean decrease heart rate. Now you wouldn't get a drug to affect each of these all at the same time. You'd want separate drugs to influence the sodium channels or the calcium channels or the potassium channels. So I'm going to draw these out separately. I'm going to draw three of these. I'm just going to draw a short portion. And I'm going to make this one sodium. This one's called a fast calcium channel, and this one's just called a potassium channel. And technically speaking, there are multiple potassium channels working here together, but we're just going to group them as one. Say you could speed up or open up this sodium channel, then this rate will go up faster. <coughs> this rate I'm trying to draw is staying the same. I'm trying to draw this parallel, and this rate will stay the same. I'm trying to draw these two as parallel. The one rate that is changing is the sodium entry. But you'll see that this is going to increase our rate. And this is essentially what happens when you eat a bunch of salty food. Or I always remember if I ate uh, sunflower seeds while playing baseball, that extra salt would increase my heart rate more than if I didn't eat sunflower seeds. And it's because that sodium can enter the cell faster, speeds up the rate, and your heart can cycle through this uh, action potential faster. You can also give drugs that slow the entry of sodium. So I'm slowing this rate right here. I'm going to keep all the other slopes the same. But you so before we were talking about this, this sodium, but now we're going to talk about this calcium. So calcium occurs right in this slope. And so we can speed up this rate by giving a drug that increases the ability of calcium to go in the cell. And this also would increase heart rate don't really do that much, but there are calcium channel blockers that would slow this rate. This rate will stay the same, this rate would stay the same, and this rate would slow, and that would decrease heart rate. You do the same thing with potassium. You can give drugs that make potassium, so potassium's over here, that make potassium leave faster. Potassium leaves the cell. So this rate will stay the same, and all other rates will stay the same. This rate will speed up, and that will increase heart rate. 
<coughs> you can also give drugs, or the body uses drugs to affect this rate too, that would slow down this pace. Now let's get back to potassium. And remember, potassium was tied to calcium. So any kind of effect on potassium will affect calcium. So if you increase the ability of potassium to leave the cell, and that's like making this larger. Let's just go ahead and draw that. If you increase potassium's ability to leave, then you should have done it this way. If you increase potassium's ability to leave, <coughs> then you increase calcium's ability to enter. If you decrease the potassium, make sure plateau is smaller. Smaller voltage voltage changes, less potassium entering. And so if you make a small potassium, you make small calcium. And we talked before about how adrenaline affects potassium. Adrenaline affects potassium in the same way in heart muscle as it did in the pacemaker cell. Adrenaline stimulates potassium channels. If you stimulate the potassium channel, you get more calcium coming in, you're going to get a stronger contra contraction. So adrenaline not only speeds up the heart rate, but it also causes the heart to beat more strongly. Also, if you get beta blockers, we talked about beta blockers back here, inhibiting that effect on potassium, then what's going to happen here is you're going to decrease the potassium. That's going to decrease the calcium. And so beta blockers slow down the heart rate, and they also decrease contractility. Now, it's kind of a tricky thing. That's kind of a tricky thing to describe what's going on with the Joxin, and it, truthfully, it's not really well understood by anyone at this stage. But the thought is that maybe normally a cell, these cells will sit at something like minus, minus 60 millivolts. And what happens is you've got a lot of sodium on the outside, a lot of potassium on the inside, and these want to move back and forth. The theory with the, the joxin is, is you poison the sodium potassium pump so you don't get quite as much sodium on the outside. Some of it can leak back in. You don't get quite as much potassium on the inside. Some of it can leak out. So the driving force how far they're separated or how much the chemical imbalance is is lessened so that ions want to move less. So it's going to lower the overall plateau and decrease contractility. All right, so just a real, real quick wrap-up. Basically, cardiac drugs work in one of three ways. Now, there are exceptions, but this is just introductory knowledge at this point. They will Decrease afterload. Make blood thinner. Make it easier for the heart to pump blood. It can then pump more blood, which is going to increase cardiac output. Pump more blood per cycle, which is going to increase cardiac output. You can give pharmaceuticals or give drugs that affect heart rate, and they can do that through acting on three channels, sodium channels, fast calcium channels, or potassium channels. You can also give pharmaceuticals that affect contractility, and basically the way you affect contractility is you recognize that calcium causes muscle contraction. So either you increase or decrease this calcium, or... Since this calcium is balanced by potassium, altering this potassium channel or potassium permeability will also alter the calcium. So you can also stimulate potassium, which stimulates calcium, which stimulates contractility. You can inhibit potassium, inhibit calcium, which inhibits contractility. Another kind of a sidebar or common drug, so we need to talk about these, digoxin. Now we didn't talk about this a lot, but basically this movement of potassium and movement of calcium is dependent on the voltage potential inside the cell. The inside of the cell is negative, which drives calcium in. Calcium, which is positive, want to wants to enter the negative cell. What the joxin does is it affects, it reduces that voltage potential. So calcium is less likely to enter. Potassium is less likely to leave. So it sort of attenuates the whole desire of ions to move. And that's going to decrease contractility. Thank you for listening.